Hi! Yes, it's Solar Roadways time again because we have some new data that's come in for their new installation. Live, live feed here of the new SR4 panels, the fourth generation or whatever. They've installed 30 brand new panels um, a couple of weeks back, I think, and they're all still working. They're all going flishy flash like this. And they just held a Christmas party here as well where they actually put a tent over the solar panels. Oh, in the middle of winter. Oh, and they install Christmas lights where they already have Christmas lights in the panels. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, um, we've got the data from these new panels. It just um, snowed and I actually uh, tweeted here. Not sure how deep it is. What, a foot deep or something like that? No, not quite. Um, the road closed sign says it all here. And um, yeah, it started, of course, they've got the heaters in there and it started to melt this tiny little holes in each one of these panels. So all the heaters in the panels here are actually working. All the LEDs still seem to be working. And I actually um, snapped a photo of a this is an electric car charging point here and um there was actually a car charging it up and no it just comes from the grid and uh this one presumably feeds back into the grid but we'll go into the calculations shortly about melting ice and about how much power is actually generated from this so after almost what four million us dollars raised in five and a half years we've got just more flashing lights and still a car has not driven on. Look, a car just drove past. Why couldn't they install have cars driving over this solar roadway? But yeah, we haven't had a car drive on this since the John Deere tractor, the infamous John Deere tractor with that weighs bugger all, weighs less than even a small car with the low pressure tires on it rolling over it back in the original video. Um, it's got to be money well spent just on entertainment value alone. <laughs> Anyway, we've got an article here from Bona County. It's probably Bono County, but I'm going to call it Bona County, just because. And here's our old friend, Scott and Julie Brewshaw. G'day, Scott and Julie. Here we go. There's the selfie. They just installed the new ones. Good on them. They're still at it. They're still eking a living out of this. I guess they've still got money left over because they did pay for these panels themselves. I guess they couldn't get uh, the Sandpoint Council to pony up the money. Yet again, what did it cost? What they spend 50 or 60 grand or something last time they gave them to install this uh, pilot and they have a new anti-glare surface apparently because of course thunderfoot went actually visited there and got <laughs> a video of like if you just look at these things on an angle the glare was terrible so yeah apparently their new anti-glare coating they're installed by the company at its own expenses way to thank the city and community for serving a real world pilot site and these are the new uh, SR4 panels. These are 50 watt panels. So we'll go into the calculations shortly. Um, and you should be able to buy these. You should be able to buy these suckers. First quarter 2020. Beauty. New panels have a new uh, texture, a feel of rough concrete than the small knobbly bumps. The surface comes from a Canadian company that makes pool surrounds, which means little or no skidding or slipping. Another bonus. And another thing, uh, the panels produce diffuse light because they've got the new, I guess that's inherent in the new uh, coating they've got on there. It just diffuses it out. So you can see them better at an angle. So yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> the LEDs are still the dumbest idea imaginable. That's and No, the dumbest idea is trying to melt the snow as we'll go into the calculations in a minute. But second best is lighting. No, are they equal? I don't know. Maybe I'll put up a poll. I'll put up a poll here in the corner up here. Let us know which is the dumber idea, LEDs or heating them up and melting the snow. And they heat up faster, apparently. There you go. The LEDs allow customers to do everything from parking lot signs to advertising. We still, after five and a half years, have not seen a single example of like lane markings and or a handicap sign or something like that. All we get is this... Christmas light show. Because of the solar technology, the snow melts, eliminating the need for snow removal. Well, they've already removed snow here and here. Somebody from the council presumably has come along and uh, removed all this snow. They could have just shoveled the snow off here, and we'll do the calculations in a minute why that would be better than trying to melt it. While some of the base centers are used to route uh, different conduits and cable, others have been drilled through to give the water a place to seep into the ground beneath the system. Because uh, I have tweeted a photo, sorry I don't have it, but yeah, there's like a rubber mat bottom. Yeah, a recycled uh, rubber base. A speeding the installation helped take more items out of the waste stream. Hmm. 
Anyway, um, d yeah, they've got like a rubber base on the bottom and they drilled holes in the bottom to let the water escape because if any water at all, moisture, water build up inside there, if you just had the rubber coating, it's going to pull up there. You have to get the water out of these things. And well, yeah, I don't know how long they're going to last. I don't know how well that's going to go, how like the drainage of the water into the system. Because if you've uh, seen the installation of these things, the old, you know, those strips they put over the top, uh, I, I do have a video of them on my second uh, channel, actually using a, uh, a corking gun to go along and put elastic on all the panels. But that's only going to last so long. So yeah, can you imagine doing this on a road? <laughs> These hexagonal glass, <laughs> big tiles. You have to elastic up each one of them and then rely on that for your water sealing. Oh, it's just insane. The new base improves the modularity of the panels, matching the shape and size of the solar railway panels. Now if crews have access to something underneath the panels, it's an easy process because, yeah, people are really going to build roads out of these things. Sure. So it's now truly modular, blah, blah. Well, what keeps them actually down? What anchors them down? Won't, when you drive cars, you put a rubber base down. Okay, you drive the cars over them. They're going to like wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, and uh, the elastic's not going to hold it. They're eventually just going to crap out. So I, I don't get it. No one would ever know that you repaired something. It's just as good as new. You can't do that with asphalt or concrete easily. Usually they do a quick fix so you see that. Wow, yeah, okay. <laughs> Chalk one up for solar roadways. While they are slightly more expensive to make, they weigh much less than the old concrete pads and as a result cost less to ship. They are also more environmentally friendly since they use all recycled materials, the Bruce said. <laughs> no, they don't use all recycled materials. The glass might be either, even if it is 100% recycled glass, all the electronics, all the LEDs, all the componentry, you know how much energy, uh, embodied energy, goes into manufacturing electronic components on this sort of scale if you implemented this uh, globally. It's just insane to say these are more environmentally friendly than asphalt, which is basically mostly recycled material anyway. They can recycle that and reuse it. It's incredibly cheap and not to mention more reliable than these things, which it looks like they're not even bolted down. What are they just doing sitting there? You expect to drive cars and trucks over these? Even the best ones you know, like even Colas, one of the best you know, road engineering companies in the world, couldn't even engineer that didn't include any electronics or anything like that. A solar road surface, the Wattway system, that could last. It, it just didn't. Not every solar installation in the world has completely failed. And these tiles, these hexagonal tiles will be the absolute worst reliability. Guaranteed. But the material holds up well. In fact, during a test to simulate the wear and tear caused by a tractor trailer, both the panels and connectors exceeded expectations. I would have thought the test would have torn these things to shred. Instead, it pretty much looks new. So he didn't have much hope in his own panels, but they've been tested. That test simulated 15 years of truck abuse in three months. This could, this could last longer than asphalt could. <laughs> you think? Come on. Please, I want to see some cars and trucks drive over these things. They're in talks with several companies, they can't name them, uh, but the entities include NASA to do at least a portion of the Kennedy Space Center parking lot <laughs> so all the cars can park on top where the sun can't get through. <laughs> But it looks like they're going ahead with installations. You'll be able to buy these. There you go. If you want to buy some, customers at solarroadways.com to get yours. Put on the notification list. Beauty. So it turns out that they're not using the old uh, Enphase website, which we used to get the old data from. That stopped in, I believe, September last year, 2018. So it's been over a year. It hasn't been producing any data at all, and they've been busted, of course. But uh, thank you to whoever uh, pointed this out. Uh, let me show you the actual link. There you go. That's the actual full link there for those playing along at home. It does actually hide that when I go here. I'm not sure why it does that. Anyway, if you know how to get into more detailed data, because I'll show you, you can possibly get more data than this. But anyway, it is there. Power and energy for the last seven days. It's nighttime now. It's currently not producing uh, any power. There's our live feed. So the lifetime energy, it's produced four kilowatt hours. Wow. My home solar installation, my three kilowatt system, produces double that. 
yeah, here's my system here. And yeah, I'm producing five kilowatt hours. So I'm producing more than this because it's winter time here. So my uh, three kilowatt system is uh, producing more power per day than this thing has since its installation. But just for reference, uh, their installation is a 1.5 kilowatt system. There's 30 panels at uh, a rated 50 watts each. See, now I'm not sure how I can like get back in date. We'll take this day here, because this looks like it was sort of a peaky day here. This was the 28th of uh, November and about 0.46 or something kilowatt hours. <laughs> 0.46 for the entire installation. And the interesting thing is, is that this um, Solar Edge website, they have lots of other public installations as well. So I went through and I found the nearest possible installation, which was this one here, which is the uh, Gonzaga, Gonzaga University. Um, and that's actually this system here. Newly, and there we go. We've got a photo of it. It uses uh, 12 panels and they're 360 watts a panel. And so, you know, it's a decent sized installation and we've actually got the data from this. So we can compare and it's the closest one I could physically find. Here's Gonzaga University. It's in Spokane and Sandpoint is up here. If you get the scale down the bottom there, it's about 10 kilometers. It's, you know, it's about 80 or 100 way as the uh, crow flies. So yeah, it's the closest I could get with public data on the same website. So if we go to the same date, the 28th of the 11th, that looks, you know, reasonably decent, you know, a little like sort of bit of cloud cover came over there, right? But it's, um, of course, it's the middle of winter over there, but it produced three kilowatts. So, you know, there's a reasonable amount of sun on that day. So that system produced 10.85 kilowatt hours on that day. So 10.85 kilowatt hours divided by a uh, 4.4 kilowatt system. I'm, I'm just going to use like a uh, ratio metric here. That's 2.46 or basically uh, two and a half times the rated uh, capacity of the system on that particular day. So solar roadways produced 0.46 kilowatt hours, say, uh, divided by 1.5 kilowatts for the system capacity. That's a factor of 0.187 compared to two and a half. So this installation here with its angled panels like this up on the roof is 13 times 13 times better produces 13 times the energy per you know space high someone who's walking through there um uh, per area per square area than solar freaking roadways not any well okay there could be different solar insulation okay i know it's like 70 80 kilometers away or whatever the solar insulation might be different but you know it's not going to be hugely different I like and it could have been more cloudy on that day but this is the best day that we have available but even factor in in this sort of stuff let's say it's even five times worse is awful absolutely awful and this matches the calculations and the data that were done in the previous videos and we've seen from all the other solar roadways installations as well but the solar freaking roadways here it seems to be like the worst of the bunch so that's going to be a combination the fact that they're flat and also the fact that they have this <laughs> thick glass coating over them and they've got the heating elements and they're, they're not full um, solar panels, but they're rate. I'm using the actual rating, their own rating, 50 watt nominal uh, panels. And it, it's just, no, it's just a joke. Come on. It, this thing is done. It was done and dusted from day one, but this is this is their latest and greatest generation panel. Oh God. Anyway, now we have to talk about clearing the snow, shall we? <laughs> so what do you need to melt snow? Well, just to actually take snow at zero degrees, not to actually, you know, if it's at minus 10 or something like that, you need to put energy into the system to actually uh, warm up the snow until it gets to zero degrees. But let's assume it's already just at zero degrees just to turn it from snow slash ice into water takes 335 kilojoules of energy per kilogram. So yeah, it's a lot. 
just to transition it. That's not to evaporate it or anything like that. So here we're being very generous. We're assuming that we don't need to change the temperature of it. We just need to transition from snow to liquid and the fact that we don't have to, you know, evaporate it or whatever. It'll just drain off um, as you might expect on a road, something like that. So just for the transition. So snow is about, uh, let's work in pounds for you Yanks, because we're, you know, we're in Yankee land here, uh, and it makes it easy anyway. 10 pounds per cubic foot of snow, that's how much it weighs. And each solar roadway's uh, tile from their own uh, data is 4.4 square feet. So 10 pounds times 4.4, let's assume that we have a, uh, a foot of snow on top of these things. Um, that's 44 pounds per tile. But hey, let's say it's not a foot deep. Let's say it's only half a foot deep. So let's divide that by two and these numbers work out nice and round. So we've got 22 pounds of snow per tile like this, which works out to 10 kilograms of snow per tile. Now 335 kilojoules per kilogram uh, for the uh, latent heat of fusion uh, to transition it from ice to water. That's equal to about 93 watt hours per kilogram. And if we've got 10 kilograms of snow per tile, you're talking 930 watt hours per tile. Hi, someone else is walking past. Yeah, have a, look, have a look at the screen. Oh, tell us what energy is. I've got a real time uh, thing. Anyway, <laughs> bye. And... <laughs> I love watching this live. It's just great. So it takes 930 watt hours per tile. We've got 30 tiles. So 930 times 30 is 27.9 kilowatt hours <laughs> required to <laughs> melt, the, just to transition the snow from ice to water if it's covering half a foot deep on this uh, 30 tile array here. And remember this is a 1.5 kilowatt system. So even with eight hours of full sun on these things producing, you know, like producing its maximum output, you're still only gonna generate half the energy required to melt the snow. At like under, I did like, like pie in the sky, best case, like it's not gonna be practical because it's gonna be a lot worse than this, but <laughs> Just like right off the bat there, just to transition it. it. This is ridiculous. Come on. Here's Sandpoint, Idaho. Of all the places to put this in the US, like right up near the Canadian border. Yeah, that's where you want the world's first installation of solar roadways. I know that's where they're from and, you know, it makes it easy and stuff like that. But <laughs> even if you put these suckers in California, <laughs> down here at San Diego, <laughs> it still ain't going to work. So anyway, there you go. After five and a half years and how many millions of Yankee bucks are spent on this thing and, well, we've got a glorified Christmas light show in the snow. I mean, it's the dumbest idea ever. These sol solar freaking roadways has always been the dumbest of all the solar roadways installations by far because they try and heat the snow. They try and light up the LEDs with the LED markers and everything. And it's just, it's hard enough. It's a ridiculous enough concept doing this with just solar panels. Every other installation of solar roadways has failed. They've lasted days, weeks, or months tops before these things are ruined. I'd love to see cars and trucks try and drive over this. Wow, <laughs> tiles flying everywhere. It'd be hilarious. Watch a live webcam. <laughs> Watch these things rock. Anyway, good on Scott and Julie Brewshaw. It's good to have a hobby. And uh, yeah, they're still going. They're still going. Still got some money left in the bank, in the piggy bank. <laughs> so as always, I hope you found that interesting. And Solar Roadways is just, it, it's comedy gold. It really is. It, it never stops giving. It's fantastic. So <laughs> if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below and over on the EV blog forum. And also check me out on LBRY. Dot com. There I am. There's my channel over there. Got 841 subs. See if we can get to a thousand subs on LBR or library. Sorry, I keep calling it LBR. Why I can't help myself. Library. Dot TV. Catch you next time.